Good morning, world. Hello, everyone, everywhere. Pastor Robert Thibodeau here with another session of prayer 2021 for today, which is September 19th. Our scripture reading for today comes from Acts chapter 16, verse 13. On the Sabbath, we went outside the city gate to the river, or we expected to find a place of prayer. We sat down and began to speak to the women who had gathered there. Let's go to the Lord with a word of prayer. Father, in Jesus' name, we thank you and we praise you for this day that you created before the world began but our eyes are just seen right now. Father, we thank you that each and every day is an opportunity to witness for you, to share the gospel of Jesus Christ with someone else. Perhaps someone somewhere this day would receive Jesus as their savior because of this broadcast. For you, Father, and to you, we give all honor, glory, and praise for that in Jesus' mighty name. Amen and amen. Now, folks, Prayer, if you've been following us this whole year, prayer needs to be a part of your life continuously. From the moment you wake up in the morning until you go to bed at night, you should be in a state of basically constant communication with God through the Holy Spirit all day long, each and every day. If you go to look at Ephesians chapter 6, verses 10 through 18, that's the, the base foundation for our study in prayer. I mean, you are the one who has to stand and speak to the devil. God's not going to do it for you. Jesus isn't going to do it for you. They've already done all they are going to do. Jesus gave you his name, his power, his authority, all to deal with the devil. And he's expecting you to do so yourself. Now, that is not to say that in certain situations where you are about to be overwhelmed by demonic forces, Jesus might intervene to set the battlefield more evenly. As a matter of fact, when that happens, we often call it what? A miracle. Miracles are nice, but let's just take a quick look at what a miracle really is. A miracle is God imposing his will and his actions in such a way that it overrides the natural order of things that he has set in place. Now, it may seem awesome to have a miracle, and I've had a few in my life more than a few. But if a miracle is the sort of thing that God has to move into your life because you have just totally screwed everything up and it's the only way he can try to restore some order, folks, that's, that's just basically messed up. Okay, It's nice to have miracles, but wouldn't it be a whole lot better and wouldn't your life be a lot more enjoyable if you could have a blessed life without needing to to have God intervene all the time to do a miracle and clean up your mess. Amen. Don't shut me down when I'm preaching good. I'm just trying to be honest here. Amen. I want you to see this. For example, let's say there's someone with a broken arm. Now, the natural process of healing in the body takes about six weeks or so, but a miracle accelerates the actual healing process in about you know six seconds. It's the same process. God just accelerates the time aspect of it. Someone who's disabled or can't walk, God heals them and accelerates the healing process. Or it starts where it had been stopped and the person leaves walking. But, but God is the one who's moving, moving to fix something that we messed up. Uh, Brother Bob, what could that person who is disabled have done? Well, in some cases, absolutely nothing. In most cases, I mean, diabetes could have been the basis or some other disease or a car accident, whether the person's fault or not. There is still some sort of error on somebody's part somewhere. And the end result, perhaps even years later, was this person being unable to walk. And we need God to intervene. Now, again, don't get me wrong. I believe absolutely 100% in miracles. I just want to get you to the point where you don't need a miracle each and every day on this earth from God just to fix mistakes that you've made along the way. If I could get you into a, a to understand a constant state of communication with God, you'll receive insight into situations and you'll avoid a lot of the mistakes you've been making and you will not need a supernatural visitation to fix things suddenly, right? These things will begin to work in your behalf and, and you will be the one in charge, put it like that, be, where before it seemed like everything else was going wrong. Well, now, if you are in a constant state of prayer with God, everything will be going right. Amen? All right, let's pray. Father, in Jesus' name, we thank you. And we praise you for this privilege 
of being able to, to pray and to be in a continuous state of communication with the Holy Spirit, that angels would whisper in her, this is the way, walk ye in it, if we try to turn to the right or to the left. Father, we thank you for the Holy Spirit in our life. We thank you for the wisdom of God, and we thank you for Jesus in our heart. Between all of these things, we should be in a constant state of continuous prayer with you. And to you, Father, we give honor and glory and praise for all things in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Glory to God. Do me a favor, leave a comment, rating, review down below. Share this out on social media. Jump over on iTunes for about two minutes and look up Prayer 2021. Leave us a rating and review there. All that does help us to get the word out. Praise the Lord. And be sure to visit our website, podcastforchrist.com. Take a look around there and download those free resources. All right, till next time, as Pastor Bob reminding you again, 1 Thessalonians 5, 17, the Living Bible says to always keep on praying. Be blessed, folks. Talk again tomorrow.